The last words of any man are significant, but how much more when those last words are spoken by the God-man, the Lord Jesus? In today's study, we visit the cross and listen to the final words of Christ spoken just before his death. You will find that they hold tremendous truth and application for all of us who live on this side of the cross. Open your Bible and let's join Scott Pauley now at Calvary. Long before the crowd ever chanted, crucify him, crucify him, and long before Jesus ever spoke a single word from the cross, the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We hear the cry of both suffering and salvation, of, of death and life. Uh, we hear the cry of sorrow and at the same time the cry of joy. That's the cry you hear from the cross. Uh, we return today to John chapter number 19 where we've looked at the Lord Jesus. You remember Pilate said, Behold the man, the perfect man, God's man, all man. But by the time you get to John 19, he's beaten and bruised and bloody and broken. I find it interesting that John, who primarily in his gospel record emphasizes the deity of Christ, reveals to us so much about his humanity. And we, we see deity here robed in flesh and taking the worst of humanity and all the wrath of God for us. And when you come to John 19, to the, to the cross, you're actually viewing the cross from Christ's perspective, not from the ground up, but from the cross down. Have you ever thought of what it looked like from his perspective? Listen to the words beginning in John 19, verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. So here we have some of the very first cries from the cross, some of the first things that Jesus said in his last words. Did you hear them? You should mark them. In verse 26, woman, behold thy son. He addresses his mother. In verse 27, behold thy mother. He addresses John, who's standing there. In verse 28, to, to no one in particular and yet to everyone, these words, I thirst. These are some of the first words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I think they're, they're very revealing to us. These are not lesser words. Uh, in fact, we get a real revelation here of several things. Let me give them to you today. First of all, we see his humanity. We are reminded that he is all man. How do we know that? Well, look at the two things these words tell us. He loved and he thirsted. That sounds very human to me. He loved Yes, he loved divinely because God is love, but remember, he also had human relationships. He loved his mother. Uh, he loved John. He addresses both of them standing here. You have the love of family and the love of friend. Isn't that beautiful? He looks at his mother and he says to her, Behold thy son. Now, let me just say to you, I think it's very revealing that his mother is even there. The fact that she stayed and also the fact that she says nothing. No recorded words. I'm sure she was weeping, mourning, and grieving. But she stays and she watches her own son die as the Lamb of God. I think this is one of the greatest evidences that Jesus is who he said he is. Look, if this had been some figment of the imagination, some fairy tale, something that Mary and Joseph had invented and told to Jesus as a little boy and placed in his mind, don't you know by this moment she would have cried out at the cross, I lied to you. It was all a farce. You're not really the Messiah. Take him down from the cross, but she doesn't. She stands there, and in silence, she watches him die. Do you know why that is? Because now 
He is not just her son. He is her savior. She has found a new family relationship because she now believes that he is indeed exactly who he is, and that is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. There are three Marys standing there. There's Mary, the wife of Cleopas. I believe this to be the wife of the the Cleopas uh, that uh, sees Jesus in Luke 24 on the road to Emmaus. I believe that was Cleopas and his wife headed home. Uh, So we have that Mary. We have Mary Magdalene. You remember Mary Magdalene? Jesus cast seven devils out of her, radically changed her life. She loved him so much. Her life had been so changed. She didn't care if all the disciples turned and fled. She was going to be there at the cross. But there is his mother there, and he looks at her. He looks at his mother, and he says, Woman, behold thy son. Now, this address of woman was not a, a disrespectful one. It was a tender one. You remember early in his ministry when she wanted him to turn water into wine at the marriage of Cain and Galilee, he said uh, this same expression, woman. It was a term of endearment, of honor. He's honoring his mother to the very end of his life. I think that's very instructive. And he says, Behold thy son. And then he turns to John and says, Behold thy mother. What's he doing? He is taking care of his mother to the very end. He knew that he would not live long enough to take care of her in her old age. He's 33 and a half years old, and he's dying. He cannot do for her what sons were supposed to do for their mother. So, oh, I love this. He makes sure she is cared for before he leaves this world. Do you know what that is? That's his love. Uh, By the way, what an example for us of what uh, the right kind of love looks like. It's sacrificial. He's not thinking of himself. He's not seeking pity from family and friends. He's a loving family. And uh, the disciple that is there, the Bible addresses him as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He, He has the great love of friendship here. Do you see the humanity of Christ? And not only in his, in his love, but in his thirst. I thirst. You see, he felt deeply, not only emotionally, but even physically. Now, you remember early in the same gospel record, John chapter 4, he sat on a well, and he was thirsty. He was weary, and he was thirsty. Why? Because our high priest is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He's been tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. He is the perfect man, but he is all man. He's not 50-50. He's 100-100. He's all God, and yes, he's all man. So in these first cries from the cross, we see his humanity. I don't know what that means to you, but I'll tell you what it means to me. It gives me great comfort because it reminds me that he really does remember my frame. He really does remember that I am dust. He knows how weak I am. He knows how weak you are today. Maybe you're just at the end of it. Maybe you are broken. Uh, Maybe it's physical. Maybe it's emotional. Whatever suffering it is you're going through today, know this, our Lord Jesus has been down that path before you ever went down that path. Follow the nail-pierced feet of Christ. And in his perfect humanity, Look at his love and look at his thirst and recognize that Jesus Christ knows exactly what you're going through and you can trust him. You can trust a Christ who has been there, who has suffered that and who now sits at the right hand of the heavenly father and he is praying for you. The cry from the cross that begins our study here brings us to the beautiful humanity of Jesus. We'll come back to the same portion of Scripture. I want to challenge you to meditate on it. In fact, you may want to read all of John 19 before our next study and just walk past Calvary today and listen to the cries from the cross. Can you hear the cries from the cross? In each of these Holy Spirit-inspired words, God has a message for us. We hope that through this study, you will come to know and love the Lord Jesus in a deeper way. For more information on a personal relationship with Christ or for helpful devotional resources, please visit us at enjoyingthejourney.org. You will have access to hundreds of articles, full-length Bible messages, and the complete Enjoying the Journey broadcast library. Remember, that only as you follow God's word will you find Christ's joy.